Hey guys, what is going on? So I thought we'd look at a few different builds today that I've put together through PC Part Picker. You know, it's that time of the year where everyone's upgrading their rigs or building uh, new PCs from the ground up. So a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, what's a good build for a thousand dollars or what's a good build for five hundred dollars. So today we're going to have a look at that. A quick word of warning, though, for those who are building a PC within the next month or so is that do uh, be aware that Ryzen 2 and uh, Nvidia's Volta and also Intel 9th generation processors are coming out next year with Ryzen 2 and Volta being probably within the next three months. So uh, don't be upset if you know you build a new PC and those components do come out. Um, I do suggest if you can wait, then do wait because these next uh, iterations will be fairly good and they will be worth waiting for. Also guys, before we get started, I just wanna make it clear that no companies have paid me to put these products here. I've gone to PC Part Picker and I've chosen the best bang for the buck or the best calling option. So uh, just before anyone calls me out, I just wanted to make that clear. There's no sponsorship or I'm not getting paid to suggest different products. So of course, we're just gonna be looking at the current generation of hardware. So for people who are building a PC, you know, with all their Christmas money, or for example, maybe you wanna jump on a Boxing Day sale or something like that. Um, I've got a few builds here, so $450. $600, $800, $1100, and then finally $1500. Of course, in that price range, you can pretty much do whatever you want, but again, I'm gonna show you what I would do with uh, $1500. Again, we are talking at US pricing as well. So I will include the links down below from Amazon. Now they are affiliate links, so I do get a small kickback, um, but at no extra cost to you. So that would be greatly appreciated. Um, of course, you don't have to buy through there at all. In fact, I will include the PC part picker links uh, which I do recommend going through those as well because most of the time the cheapest vendor you know is a different different one not just Amazon so let's start off with $450 and what I would do with that money so here we are sticking with the Pentium G4560 pretty much the best uh, bang for the buck processor in that price range now I'm assuming here that you probably only want to game at around 60 FPS so the G4560 is going to be more than enough for that we're going to be putting that into the B250 motherboard now you can go with the H110 that will be a little bit cheaper but do just know that you will have to update the BIOS so that's why I put the B250M there from MSI um, really good motherboard for the price for $46 for that is pretty unreal now we are sticking with 8 gigabytes of memory here 2400 megahertz that'll be enough now you will be bottlenecked in some games like Battlefield 1 and maybe PUBG I'm not sure but uh, 8 gigabytes is enough for now now I did manage to squeeze in a GTX 1050 Ti into this build, um, also MSI's Gaming X card. Now I did review this card a while back, maybe four or five months ago, and the thermal performance was just unreal. So if you can jump on that deal, uh, I really recommend it because it is a pretty solid deal for 140 bucks. Uh, this card usually goes for uh, 170, 180, so jump on that if you can. Otherwise, uh, GTX 1050 is a pretty solid option as well. And that'll cut the price down to about 430, 420-ish. So, so that would be a good deal as well. Now, in terms of the case and power supply, look, here we're just going with a 400 watt option from EVGA. Um, that's gonna be more than enough for this build, even if it isn't bronze rated or anything like that. Storage, we're going with 500 gigabytes. Um, we can't get too greedy in this price bracket, pretty much just uh, cut down the storage there. If you do need more storage or if you wanna go with an SSD, you'll have to fork out a little bit more cash. So just keep that in mind. And for the case, we're going with Fractal Designs Focus G. So you get an acrylic side panel, uh, two front intake fans. I'm not really sure about cable management. I haven't reviewed this case. So don't, uh, don't complain if the airflow isn't too great, but uh, it's pretty much the best looking option at that price range. All right, so now let's check out the $600 option. All right, so stepping it up a little bit. Now we're stepping up to the GTX 1060 three gigabyte. And this build will cost you $625 in total. There are a few mail-in rebates here as well. So if you don't wanna deal with those, just choose some cheaper options. But again, if you can make use of those, they are pretty good deals. So now for this build, we are stepping it up a little bit to the Ryzen 3 1200. Base clock of 3.1 gigahertz, but it can be overclocked since we are using a B350 motherboard from ASRock. Uh, you can take that processor up to 3.8, 3.9 gigahertz and get really solid gaming performance. And the benefit of this build is you will be able to upgrade to a Ryzen 2 processor in a few months time as well. So you can just swap out that Ryzen 3 for something else down the line. Um, and that ASRock motherboard will be totally fine to handle that as well. Still sticking with eight gigabytes of RAM. However, we are stepping up the speed just a little bit, 2666 megahertz here. And of course, 
Uh, it does look a little bit better here as well with the just black shroud on that as well. For the power supply, we're going with 450 watt option from Corsair. It's the CX450M, I believe. 80 plus bronze rated, pretty solid option for $43. And for the case, we're going with the NZXT S340. Pretty popular option and for $55, you can't really complain here. Overall, this build is pretty solid. Uh, you're gonna handle 1080p gaming uh, in that 60 FPS range at least. Uh, three gigabytes of VRAM on the GPU. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, you know, is that enough moving into 2018? It will be, but don't expect to be playing everything at ultra settings. You will have to drop some things down to high or maybe medium. So if you really want to play at ultra settings or maybe at 1440p even, check out our next build, which is the $800 gaming build. Now stepping it up to a quad core eight thread processor. So this is going to be really good for editing and stuff like that. If you guys do a little bit of that as well, maybe you capture some gameplay and you wanted to upload that as well. So that's going to be really solid. Again, plugging that into the ASRock B350 uh, micro ATX AM4 motherboard, you're going to be able to overclock that as well. So 3.8, maybe up to four gigahertz if you're lucky, that's going to get you some really good gaming performance as well. Same memory here, uh, for the storage, we are stepping up to an SSD, so really fast to load all those games and of course your OS. So 240 watts, it should be enough to load, you know, two or three games, uh, the ones that you mostly play and that's really gonna help out with speeds. So if you can fork out the $75 that I've put there, really do recommend that. Graphics card wise, as I said before, we're going with the GTX 1060, six gigabytes, really solid card. Um, I looked at the RX 580 options, uh, they were a little bit too expensive, so probably stick with a GTX 1060 6 gigabyte for now, unless you can get an RX 580 for a good price. Maybe you wanna look at the used market as well. Case-wise, the P300 from Fantex. Airflow-wise, I'm not really sure because I haven't reviewed it, but it does look okay. Definitely a great case for $64, so that's a really solid option. And then power supply-wise, we are really stepping it up. 550 watt, 80 plus gold rated power supply from EVGA. It's the Supernova G2. That might be overkill for some people, but 550 watts gold rated, that's gonna be pretty much enough for you to run uh, up to a GTX 1080. So if you wanna throw a cheaper one in there, maybe a bronze rated uh, 500 watt, that'll be enough as well. So let me know what you guys think about that. I think this is a pretty solid build for 1080p gaming. Uh, you're gonna hit upwards of 100 FPS in some games at high settings, so really solid option. If I had 800 US dollars, this is pretty much uh, the exact build that I would buy, so. All right, now really stepping it up here to the $1,100 gaming build. So here we're stepping it up to the Ryzen 5 1600, so a six core, 12 thread processor, again, which can be overclocked, uh, upwards of four gigahertz, which is really gonna help you in most games. Now, motherboard-wise, we are going with the ASRock uh, Pro 4 B350 motherboard, still B350. You don't need X370 at this point, especially in this price bracket. So we are stepping up to 16 gigabytes of RAM as well, which is going to help you immensely. And if I could have done this with the $800 build and $600 build, I really would have. And RAM prices right now are so, so frustrating. I just bought a 16 gigabyte kit for myself for another build and man, it cost me 350 Australian dollars just for a 3000 megahertz 16 gigabyte kit and oh, so frustrating. But what can you do? This 16 gigabyte kit clocked at 3000 megahertz is really gonna help you out. Now to afford that 16 gigabyte kit, I have cut the storage down a little bit, but it's still gonna be more than enough for most people. You know, we're going with a SSD, 128 gigabytes is gonna be enough for your OS and maybe a couple games. And then for the rest of your games and storage and stuff like that, store that on the 500 gigabyte hard drive. Now, GPU wise, we are stepping up to the GTX 1070. And this is really where this rig transitions into, you know, a 1440p gaming rig or a high refresh rate uh, 1080p rig. So GTX 1070 is a really solid option. I looked at the Vega 56 options as well. They were a little bit too pricey uh, in my opinion. This EVGA option for $429 is gonna be your best bet. For the case, we're going with the Meshify C from Fractal Design. Now, I reviewed this case, it's actually right behind me there. Pretty solid airflow, especially when you add in a couple fans in the front intake. So when you've got the triple fan front intake, airflow is on par with the Silverstone RL06, which is pretty much one of the best airflow cases around, but that was a little bit too pricey for this list. So if you do have an extra $30 or so, I do recommend chucking the extra two fans in, or maybe even stepping up to the Silverstone RL06. 
and that's really going to improve airflow uh, for your CPU and your GPU. And as I said before, we're sticking with the same 550 watt gold rated power supply from EVGA, really solid option for 55 bucks. And now the $1,500 gaming build, the last one. So this is what I would personally do with this money. But again, you guys, $1,500 is a lot of freedom. You can change out the case, motherboard, anything. You, there's a lot of freedom in this price range, but let me run you through my decision-making process here. Now, the i5-8400 is still a really good processor, even when plugging it into a Z370. I know that doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but Granted, we are putting it into a cheaper Z370 motherboard as well. So the ASRock Z370 Pro 4 motherboard, pretty good for the price, 120 bucks, um, but nothing crazy in terms of VRM phases because we're not gonna be overclocking. Uh, the i5-8400, you're pretty much gonna see no bottlenecking there. Uh, so really, this rig is really appropriate for people who wanna play at 165 hertz, uh, whether that be at 1080p or 1440p, depending on which games and settings that you're playing at. But again, you're not gonna see any bottlenecking there. So that's a pretty good option. For the CPU cooler, it might be a little bit overkill. Uh, you can save some money if you want and get something a little bit cheaper. But again, we had that buffer there for the $1,500. So I went ahead and chose the Dark Rock Pro 3 from Be Quiet. I personally like the look of it. Acoustics are really good as well. And of course, thermals are really impressive on this cooler. We're sticking with the same memory kit here, 16 gigabytes from Corsair. The Vengeance LPX kit is pretty much the best bang for the buck here. So try and stick with that. Storage is gonna be completely uh, solid state here. So we're going with a 240 gigabyte drive and a 500 gigabyte drive. Try and store your OS and stuff on the 240 gigabyte and then the rest of your files on a separate drive, uh, games, Steam library, that sort of thing. Um, again, solid state is really gonna help you out with those speeds, loading those games and that OS really quick. Now, GPU wise, we are stepping it up to the GTX 1080 from EVGA. Now, I said this in the intro, but if you can hold out for NVIDIA's Volta GPUs coming out next year, probably within the next few months, then I really recommend it, especially when you're spending $550 or $600 on a GPU. It should be pretty exciting to see what that amount of money can get you uh, in a few months time. So if you can hold out and just make do with what you've got now, I would recommend that. Otherwise, the GTX 1080 is a really solid option. And that's what I would buy uh, personally if I had a rig with this amount of money. Perfect option for 144 hertz gaming and above. Now, case-wise, we are sticking with the Mesh FI C from Fractal Design. Uh, really solid all-round case. Tempered glass, really solid airflow, really good cable management. So no need to spend any more money. But if you guys want to buy a different case, uh, go ahead. But personally, this is what I would go for, even if I was buying you know, a $2,000 rig. Mesh of IC is more than enough to accommodate uh, those components. And lastly, the power supply, uh, as I mentioned before, 550 watts is gonna be enough for this rig. We're not gonna be overclocking the processor, so the i5-8400 cannot be overclocked, uh, even though we are using a Z370 motherboard. If we were using something like an 8600K or an 8700K, and we were drawing up to 150 watts of power, then sure, step it up to like a 600 or 650, that'd be more than enough there. But uh, in the case here, 550 watts uh, is enough. So that pretty much wraps everything up, guys. Uh, let me know what you think of these builds, if you would change any certain components. Uh, if you're gonna use one of the builds to build a PC, that would be completely awesome. So drop your comments down below and let me know what you think. Also, I'm interested to see how many people are actually waiting for AMD's Ryzen 2 or Nvidia's Volta GPUs. So are you guys waiting for these components or do you not really care and you're pretty much ready to build right now? Let me know in the comments below and as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.